hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh yes, oh yes, God. We praise your name, we praise your name, Jesus, in this place. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes, God, yes, God. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, Jesus. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus, friend of sinners. We have strayed so far away. We cut down people in your name, but the sword was never ours to swing. And Jesus, friend of sinners, the truth's become so hard to see. The world is on their way. They're tripping over me. I'm always looking around, but never looking up. I'm so double-minded. A plain card saint with dirty hands and a heart divided. Whoa.
endures forever, God. Your grace endures forever, Jesus. Your mercy endureth forever, almighty God. The Bible says that his mercies renew every single morning. You can't run out of the mercies of God. You can't run out of the grace of God. You can't run out of the love of God. You can try to run away from it. Oh, but Jesus will leave the 99 for you. He loved you so much. He loved you too much to leave you. He loved you too much to leave you alone and by yourself. Oh, hallelujah. His love endures forever in this place. I don't know where you find yourself tonight. If you're feeling unloved, if you're feeling like you're outside of the mercies of God. Well, I've come to tell you that Jesus loves you. He died upon the cross. Oh, he chose death, almighty. He chose death. Oh, hallelujah. He allowed himself uh, to be murdered. Uh, he didn't deserve it. Uh, oh, hallelujah. But he did it just for you. Uh, and he did it just for me. Uh, oh, hallelujah. An unwarranted punishment for the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Uh, for who can be perfect? Uh, but Jesus was perfect, almighty God. Yet he chose to die upon a, a sinner's. He, he died a sinner's death, uh, though he knew no sin. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, for that I worship him. For that I praise him. Because I owe him everything tonight. I owe him my life. Oh, hallelujah. How can we repay thee in this love of God? Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we come before you tonight, God, humbly asking, Lord Jesus, uh, that you would show us mercy in this place, God, that you would show us love, almighty Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah.
blood was spilled for me, Jesus. Oh, lead me to the cross, God, where I might find my salvation. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, for it's nothing but the blood of Jesus that washes me white as snow. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, if it wasn't for your cross, God, if it wasn't for your sacrifice, Jesus, oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, God, where would I be, almighty Jesus? Where would I be without your sacrifice, God? Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, yes, God, yes, God, yes, God. Hallelujah, hallelujah.
Hallelujah, hallelujah. I'm so happy to be in the house of the Lord this evening. If he did something good for you, you ought to lift up a shout. Hallelujah, Jesus. Yes, God. We thank you, Lord. We praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Jesus. Lord God, there's nobody like you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. It is such an honor to be in the house of this Lord and the Lord. Amen. You may be seated. So happy just to be in this place and alive and in good condition. Amen. Uh, I want to thank everybody for coming this evening. You could be anywhere else on a Friday night. Amen. But you are here in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. So just some, a couple of announcements. This Sunday we have our Easter Resurrection Sunday service. We're so excited for that. Uh, we've been planning and preparing for that. Um, we're believing to have a good time in fellowship. Amen. And with that being said, uh, we have a special minister tonight. Um, Brother Matthias Vargas is going to be bringing the word. We want to give him the liberty. Why don't you say, Brother Matthias, preach to us. Amen. 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 God bless you, church. God bless you. So exciting to be in the house of the Lord tonight. Amen. I'm excited to have this opportunity to minister to you all the word that God has given me tonight. Amen. I want to give a little bit of a praise report tonight. Amen. My uncle was currently looking for a kidney donor. And the other day he was accepted to have a kidney. So he went and got the kidney. And for a split moment, his body was rejecting the kidney. Amen. So our family began to pray and we started praying for around 10, 10 minutes. We, we straight prayed, just straight prayed. And we got a call a little bit later that his body was fully functioning. Amen. So I just want to praise the Lord for that, that the Lord is still working miracles. Amen. That the Lord is still providing the need of his people. Amen. I just wanted to thank the Lord for that. Amen. The reason why pastor is not here tonight is because a friend of ours husband has died. Amen. So they're there respecting the family going to the funeral. Amen. So let's keep the pastor and that family in prayer. Amen. Tonight, I want to minister to you on this subject, waiting on the moving of waters. Amen. Mating, waiting on the moving of waters. Amen. If we could turn our Bibles to John chapter 5, verse 1. John chapter 5, verse 1. It says, After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting, for the moving of water. Amen. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie, and knew that he had been now a long time in that case. He saith unto him, Wilt thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man, when the water is troubled, to put me into the pool. But while I am coming, another steppeth down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed, and walk. And immediately the man was made whole, and took up his bed, and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Amen. So I wonder if we could put down our Bibles for a second and join me in prayer. Amen. Lord Jesus, we pray, Lord God, over this service. Lord Jesus, we pray, Lord God, that you would have your way. Lord Jesus, we pray, Lord God, for the families, Lord Jesus, that are in need tonight. Lord Jesus, we pray that you would be with them, Lord God. We pray, Lord Jesus, for, Lord God, our family members that are traveling at this time, Lord God. That you would allow them to be safe, Lord Jesus, and allow them, Lord God, to stay, Lord Jesus, protected by your hand, Lord God. We pray all these things in your wonderful name. Amen. Hallelujah. You may be seated. Amen. Amen. 
Amen. Waiting for the moving of waters. Amen. The Bible starts off telling us, amen, about a man that was laying at this pool named Bethesda. Amen. This place in Jerusalem called Bethesda. Amen. This place was a, a pool where all of the sick, all of the lame, all of the diseased people would gather and believe that they would be healed if they could just dip in the water. Amen. This pool, the Bible says, an angel would come and stir the waters or trouble the waters, and whoever got into the pool first would be healed. Amen. The book of John is the only place in the Bible that mentions the pool of Bethesda, so we have to assume that it really was an angel. Amen. This place must have been a well-known pool for miracles, judging by the fact that the religious Sanhedrin people didn't shut it down. Amen. Or the Jewish people at all. They didn't shut it down. Amen. The Bible says that this lame man was laying beside the pool of Bethesda for 38 years. Amen. For 38 years. Could you imagine staying in one place for 38 hours or not moving at all for 38 minutes? I know I couldn't. Amen. But this man was lying in the same position for 38 years. Years in the same place, no change of scenery for 38 years. Amen. It must have seemed like torture to him, seeing people go into the pool before him and come out healed. It must have been torturous seeing people walk around and be free and jumping as they came out of the pool being healed. Amen. I personally couldn't imagine being lame in the biblical times. Amen. Because nowadays we have things like wheelchairs or mopeds, things like that. But back in the day, they didn't have anything, amen. You had to rely on people to carry you, not anything else, amen. So pay attention because I am going somewhere with this, amen. This man would have to be carried around, maybe sometimes by his family members or maybe people that he didn't even know. He was a burden to everyone around him. He must have been willing to try anything just so he could be able to walk, to be healed. Amen. He was in a very vulnerable place, having to ask people for favors every now and then to carry him. Amen. Perhaps maybe he had been scammed or run over a couple of times, asking or paying people to carry him from one place to another, and they just ran off with his money. Amen. Or maybe perhaps he was scammed paying people that he believed could heal him only to be a scam. Amen. We would have to assume most of things things happened before he settled at the pool for 38 years. Amen. But I want to tell you, church, that sometimes our spiritual lives can become exactly like this man's life. Amen. Maybe our physical mobile and healthy, maybe our physical body is mobile and healthy, but our spiritual lives may be having a disease, amen. Maybe we are spiritually tired of being in the same dormant, dry, weary place in our walk with God, amen. Maybe our spiritual lives are starting to show to be a burden around the people that we trust, amen, the people that we love, amen. Maybe some people that are surrounding us are starting to feel the weight of our spiritual walk, amen, and I may not be talking to people in this place, but I know that somebody listening is being ministered to, amen, amen, this man who had to be carried around for 38 years, he was having to ask other people to carry what he should be able to carry naturally for 38 years, amen, but I want to tell you, church, that sometimes if we are not careful, our spiritual lives can become like this man, amen, Maybe they started feeling that weight, not only physically of having to pick him up, but maybe in our spiritual lives, having to pick us up. Amen. Having to force us to go to church or having to force us to live right or to not do certain things. Amen. Amen. Maybe they are starting to become very wearisome. Amen. You can only carry another person's body until your own body gives out. Amen. And you can only help someone walk with God enough until your own spiritual walk with God is not right because you're giving somebody else more attention than you are God. Amen. 
Amen. But this man found himself in the same spot for 38 years. Most likely, not only physically, but spiritually. Amen. He was probably in the same belief pattern for 38 years. Maybe he might have lost all hope. He might have even have uh, thought he would be like that forever, that maybe no one would be able to heal him or nothing would be able to hear, heal him. Amen. But can I tell you, church, God allowed him to lay there for 38 years so he could minister to the people around him. Amen. If we can go to John chapter 6, verse 1. It says, after these things, Jesus went over the Sea of Galilee, which is the Sea of Tiberias. And a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. Amen. This scripture takes place immediately after what had just happened with the man at the pool. Amen. So God allowed that man to be diseased for that long so he could minister to the people around him. Amen. To the people that might have been laying there. Because it doesn't say to the person that was diseased. No. It says on them that were diseased. So he most likely would have healed other people that were diseased at that time. Amen. Amen. I want to tell you, church, that we cannot allow ourselves to become like this man. And be dormant and stay in the same place. And not preparing. Amen. We cannot allow ourselves to stay in the same place and simply wait for something to happen. Amen. We cannot simply stay in the same place and be waiting on the moving of waters. Amen. But we have to begin to prepare for things are going to happen in the future. Amen. Amen. We cannot allow we cannot allow ourselves to start waiting on moving waters when we should be preparing for the moving of the spirit. Amen. In John chapter 5, verse 3, it says, And these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of water. Amen. Multiple people, not just the man that the Bible talks about specifically, were all there waiting for the moving of water, not planning for anything else except for waiting on that moving water. Amen. And I'm telling you, church, we cannot get to that place where we cannot move forward anymore, or we don't want to move forward anymore, but we have to keep preparing, amen. There's a quote from a Chinese author that says, a little movement is more than no movement, amen. Even if you have to crawl to one place to another, that is better than having to stay in the same place, amen, with the same walk, with the same spirit, with the same attitude, with the same thought process with the same belief system. Amen. We have to move forward in the things of God. Amen. Yes, we might get tired. Yes, we might get weak. But if we could just keep moving forward into the new place, I'm telling you, church, we could break barriers that have never been broken before. Amen. We could go places that have never been gone to before. Amen. If we could just keep moving forward. Amen. We cannot stay dormant. We cannot stay still. But our Lord that we serve is a moving spirit. Amen. He moves all over the earth. Amen. So we must be like him. Amen. Amen. And to those of the people that are listening. Amen. Online that may be facing what I am describing. Amen. The Lord God has given you a gift this this night. Amen. That is allowing you to be ministered to tonight. Amen. To find a healing tonight. To find a spiritual blessing tonight. Amen. The Lord God has given you just enough time to see this message. To turn back to him. Amen. To move forward into his things. To move forward into his presence. Amen. The Lord Jesus is extending his hand out to you right now. Wanting you to take his hand. To accept him as your own and to live for him. Amen. He's telling you right now to pick up your spiritual bed and walk. Amen. But you have to believe in him. We have to stop waiting for moving waters and start moving toward the thing that we know is true. The thing that we know is moving. The God that we know is still alive. For today, 
Uh, 2,000 years ago, he was crucified, but we know that on Sunday, amen, three days later, he was risen, amen. So we know that our God is still alive and he is still moving, amen. You can visit the tomb of Buddha, amen. You can visit the tomb of Muhammad, but the tomb of Jesus you will find is empty, amen. Because our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is still alive, amen. He's still kicking it today, amen. So we must continue to believe in him, amen. We got to stop staying in the same place. We got to leave that relationship. Amen. We got to leave that toxic relationship. We got to stop talking to the same people that are dragging us down. Amen. We got to stop doing the same actions that we are doing. And we got to pick up our bed and walk. Amen. So if you believe it tonight in this place, why don't you go ahead and lift up your hands and shout a shout of praise. Amen. And to the God that we serve. Hallelujah, Jesus. Why don't you go ahead and stand and start praying for the people that we know are struggling, amen. For the people that we know that are needing a, a witness to go and help them draw closer, amen, to our Lord Jesus Christ. Why don't we pray for those people, amen, that we know are staying dormant. Even if we have to be that person that can lift them up spiritually, that can lift them up uh, physically. If we can be that person for a period of time. We should be that person to help them draw closer. Amen. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. You are worthy, Lord God. Help us to minister, Lord Jesus, to the hurting, Lord God. Help us to minister, Lord Jesus, to the, Lord God, physically laboring people, Lord God, that are needing a witness, Lord Jesus, that are needing a touch from you, Lord God. We pray for them, Lord Jesus. We witness, Lord God. We pray, Lord Jesus, that you would anoint our lips, Lord God, to speak life into their situation, Lord God. We pray that you would anoint our lips, Lord God, to speak unto them, Lord God, to pick up their bed and to walk, Lord Jesus. We pray, Lord God, that our words, Lord Jesus, would speak unto them life, Lord God, that they would, Lord Jesus, spiritually be miracled, Lord God, and be healed, Lord Jesus, that they would jump for joy, Lord God, that they would live for you, Lord God, that they would pick up their bed and walk, Lord God, that they would start moving forward, Lord Jesus, that they would not stay in the same place, Lord God, but that they would move on to greater things, Lord God, that they would move on to the things that you have in store for them, Lord God. We pray, Lord Jesus, that they would find their way to a church, Lord God, this Sunday, Lord God, to be ministered to, Lord God, about your resurrection, Lord God. We pray, Lord Jesus, that they would go to a church, Lord God, to be ministered to, Lord God, to receive a blessing, Lord God, to be touched by your spirit, Lord God. We pray for things to change, Lord God, that they would not be the same, Lord God, that they would not be dormant, Lord Jesus, but that they would continue to move forward, amen. And if you believe that in this house, why don't you go ahead and give a shout of praise, amen. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. You are worthy, you are worthy, Jesus. There's nobody like you, Lord Jesus. You are worthy, you are worthy, Jesus. You are worthy, you are worthy. Hallelujah. Why don't we give the Lord a strong hand clap one more time. I want to say thank you for those that have come tonight faithful to the house of God. Let us pray for the Williams family. Amen. For the church, New Life Tabernacle of Belle Glade tonight. As they comfort their loved ones, the loss of their brother in the church there. That God would continue to do a mighty work according to his will there in the city of Belglade. Lord, we pray tonight, almighty God, to comfort the Williams family. We know, Lord, that you know all things. That you have prepared their hearts, Lord, and have led them, almighty God, to this moment in their life. We ask you, Lord, tonight, Jesus, that, hallelujah, Lord, that you would continue, God, to do the work and to strengthen them tonight, almighty God. That you would strengthen the church, Lord, and the family as they see, almighty God, how 
All of this, Lord, comes to a place, Lord, where we must recognize our frailty, Lord, and our humanity. I pray, God, that in this moment that you would strengthen the Williams family, Lord, his wife and his children, almighty God, his parents, his brothers and sisters, Lord, and family, God, extended family. We thank you, Lord, for having the opportunity to go, Lord, and to, hallelujah, honor his memory, almighty God, and the life that he lived. Oh, Lord, what a powerful testimony of Brother Williams, how he touched many lives. I pray tonight, God, that our lives would be an example, Lord, like our brother, Lord, who has passed on. I pray tonight for my brother-in-law, Adam, tonight, Jesus. As you continue the work in his body, Lord, we ask for complete healing, God, of every area of his life. We pray tonight, God, that you would stop whatever it is, Lord, that is stopping him, Lord, from receiving strength. We ask, God, that you, Lord, would continue the work, Lord, and perform this mighty miracle in his life. And can the church say amen tonight? Amen. The Bible says in the book of Psalms 8, 18, verse 15, it says, amen, then at your command, O Lord, at the blast of your breath, the bottom of the sea could be seen, and the foundations of the earth were laid bare. In the King James, it says, then the channels of waters were seen, and the foundations of the world were discovered at thy rebuke, O Lord, at the blast of thy breath of thy nostrils. He sent from above, and he took me, he drew me out of many waters. Oh, we should let those waters be stirred in our hearts tonight. Those moving waters that still refresh and revive our very souls. Amen. Those waters are still calling out to the very foundations of this earth that all those who would come and receive this great plan of salvation would come and allow those moving waters. Amen. Hallelujah. To convert their souls to the saving of their house. We pray tonight for all those that have not had that experience, that they would wait no longer, for we truly know that time is of the essence in this season of our life. Amen. The signs are all around us now that we should prepare our hearts and we should prepare our minds to receive all that the Lord has for us. Amen. So I say to you tonight that he, amen, sent from above. He took me and he drew me out of many waters. Let us pray, Lord. We thank you tonight for those many waters, Lord, that you revive and restore our souls in, almighty God. That river of living waters, the Bible says. Oh, that river of living waters, God. Uh, let it be, Lord, stirred up tonight, Jesus. Let it move again in us, God, as we, Lord, stir up the gift within us, God, and we call out to you, Lord, in these moments and seasons of our life. Uh, you showed us, Lord, the foundation of the earth, but it drew itself from the waters, almighty God. We thank you, Lord, tonight that you use those waters, Lord, to wash away our sin, almighty God. It is a representation of the burial of Christ. Oh, Lord, we thank you tonight, God, for taking the cross, for, Lord, helping us to understand the great penalty for the sin in our life, Lord. And we ask, God, that you would open up the eyes of understanding of others, that they too may come, Lord, and be drawn out from many waters. In the name of Jesus, may you be blessed and not stressed. Let God take care of the rest in your life, and he will in Jesus' name. God bless you tonight. Amen. In the book of Psalms, chapter 119, verse 105, the Bible says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Our prayer here at the Jesus Church is that the word that went forth tonight was a lamp unto your feet and a light unto your path. That your life was forever changed by this word that was preached to you tonight. And we pray all these things in the name of Jesus. And remember church, be blessed, don't be stressed, and let God take care of the rest. And he truly will in the name of Jesus.